don't you think it's funny that like something like that can get the green light and something like I said about my dirty uh, mud getting treated by bacteria that they found, I think it was in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's totally fine. No one bats an eyelid. Yeah. As soon as you give an organism a gene from somewhere else, people fucking lose their <laughs> mind. Why, hello there, people of the internet. It's me, Miles, and welcome to another, well, pretty awesome episode of the League of Nerds, if I say so myself. Uh, I would like to say, as always, I'm joined by James, but James, again, isn't here uh, as we're recording this episode. He's away in America somewhere. But we actually have Buck with us. Hello, Buck. Yo! Um, hello, Miles. How are you doing today? Super. Just super. Oh, uh, you not, uh, thanks for asking. Not going to say that. Th- enough, th- that. Thanks, uh, thanks for asking. You missed that opportunity right there, buddy. Yeah. Anyway, and we have uh, another guest, a returning nerd. We have Kitch again. Hello. Hey, how are you? It's been an age. <laughs> You're breaking the fourth wall here, Kitch. You're breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Uh, so, yeah, we have uh, two lovely people over from the other island next to mine. So, uh, apologies, everyone who can't understand them. <laughs> I'm starting off insulting you guys. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Uh, a Dublin do accent's not too bad. It's the the old Ulster accents. That's the that's the, <laughs> the cat that's the killer. <laughs> I pr- I pronounce my words. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. I'm getting you confused with Cork. Uh, the oh Cork, Jesus. I was going to start going on about just making fun of your accent, but I don't think anybody outside of Ireland would get the jokes I was going to make. <laughs> so I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, it it saved me a lot of time on Facebook afterwards because I have loads of friends from Cork, so they'll be killing me after this. Anyway, uh, so uh, this week's episode was actually Kitch's suggestion. So Kitch, um, do you want to lead us off? Uh, sure. Um, hi. Well, I've been trying to rack my head how about how, how the best way to introduce this topic so I've I've, I've uh, thought of this the earth's population is expected to rise by as far as I hear about 5 billion people by 2050 uh, by, according to the UN now these people are going to need food shelter clothing and you know heat and of course internet you know that's apparently becoming a a necessity nowadays and but in order to make sure that those resources are available we need obviously energy we need these are energy intensive processes so uh, the energy what we have right now is from the combustion of fossil fuels which is no longer uh, feasible as Due to climate change, the releasing of greenhouse gases is causing our planet to um, you know, warm up and lead to in, um, l- less predictable weather, uh, more extreme weather. Um, and before those people write, yeah, it global r- r- climate change does happen. Just, 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 just accept it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm reading a book at the moment by a chap called uh, what's he called? Patrick Moore. Uh, and he tells me it's, it's not happening. This is Patrick Moore of Greenpeace? Yeah, he is, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, he's a bell end. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, he's not too bad. I, I disagree with him with uh, regards to climate change, but a lot of the other stuff I, I agree with him uh, with, and some of it I think is a bit, all oh, right. Oh, and just to correct you, Kitch, sorry to be this guy, uh, it's predicted to be about 9.6 billion people by 2050. So it's another two point four billion. Uh, okay, I I I knew that figure wasn't totally correct, um, but yeah. Uh, so, sorry, uh, I don't goof. <laughs> you should apologise, you <laughs> bastard. Oh, but you only say things that are one hundred percent factually correct on this podcast. We're never wrong. Yeah, cool. So uh, before we interrupted you, you were talking about climate change and how uh, maybe burning fossil fuels with the population that just seems to be going up and up at the moment isn't really too viable. Uh, so, yeah, do you want to introduce us more into, uh, I guess, biofuels then? Well, biofuels is one possible alternative energy source. And now bio- Sorry to be a dick again, but isn't coal technically a biofuel and oil? Technically, yeah, I suppose. I, I su- 
Bose. <laughs> Uh, I know you're talking about that. Sorry, I've, I've been a dick today. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Let's show that's, that's, that's actually an interesting point to make it like that. that w- w- what is w- what is the thing that separates, like, say, saying coal from um, corn, from, from ethanol made from corn? Like, w- 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 why do we say one is bio and one is not? Well, the, I think technically they, they both are, but it, it means what you... Essentially, in a colloquial sense, it means something different. I, so I suppose by, it's more... Biofuels are more... Coal is more the the biomass after um, years of uh, actually sorry I don't actually know the process of coal formation I'm not really enormous amount of pressure sure yeah right? under a pressure and temperature it's more of an abiotic transformation of biomass well here, here. All, all we need to know a dinosaur dies some <laughs> rocks fall on top of them oil sort of yeah, done <laughs> done well biofuel is the microbes basically taking a substrate such as a fermentable sugar like glucose, processing it to a, a fuel such as methane or hydrogen or ethanol or butanol. Um, you know, it's a real shame that James isn't here today because I'm pretty sure he used to work at one of these factories, didn't he? I don't know who you're I asking here. I, think you, <laughs> you're oh, sorry. I thought you knew, Buck. Yeah, I, I thought that he worked at some kind of biofuel kind of place. I might have got that wrong. But anyway, yeah, so you're about, like, um, getting bugs and what have you to produce fuel for us. Uh, and also, are you also talking about uh, ethanol from, like, crops and stuff like that? Uh, yes. It's, so, the f- yeah, so, bi- so that will be biofuels. Now, at the... Um, at the moment, you have first-generation biofuels. This comes from the fermentation of fermentable sugars, such as glucose, to these fuels, such as ethanol and biobutanol. Uh, second generation is, is uh, the, it's the same process, only it's not glucose. It's, a, it's more of the l- 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 lignin, lignos, lignos, oh, sorry, I can't pronounce it. It's one of those things I can. I only see the word written, <laughs> uh, but it's from the. It's basically non-ferment. It's a non-fermentable parts of the plant, the structural parts, the lignin stuff like that, that we don't like. We don't eat it. Um, the bacteria have a hard time degrading it. Now I know there's work on, um, in uh, enzymes trying to trying to engineer them to break to be able to break down these materials. I'm not too sure at the where exactly that that research is at right now. More what I'm interested in actually is uh, microbial electrolysis cells. Oh, uh, wait, what are those? Okay, so do you know um, the conventional water electrolysis process, where water is split between Into hard- in a in an electrochemical cell? Yeah. Um, kind of, but for our audience, do you want to explain it? And uh, me. Okay, so an electro. So an what? What is water? Explain this to me. <laughs> well, at the moment of the Big Bang, <laughs> uh, in a, in a normal electrochemical cell, you have at at one end you'll have a cathode. So this is just a, an electrode chart poised at a positive. No, negative potential. And then you'll have the anode, which is just another electrode poised at a like, cathode negative potential, anode positive potential. Um, and then this, if you poise the, uh, this electrochemical cell at a high enough potential, you're able to split the water molecules f- from hydrogen and oxygen. Now, I, I'm not an electrochemist, so I'm not too sure at the exact, you know, bits and bobs of it. But just for simplicity, you're able to spit water into hydrogen and oxygen. And this is usually done in, in uh, school uh, school classes to show this process. Uh, you know, you have a little collection tube at one end, a little collection tube at the other end, and you're able to show the presence of oxygen by relighting the long splint. Uh, that process can be used to produce uh, hydrogen. It's um, though it's not very efficient. 
uh, because you have to supply a lot of uh, energy to split the water molecule because the water molecule is so so stable. However, in a microbial electrolysis cell, um, pretty much the the uh, at one end you have a microbial biofilm. So it's just a my biofilm is just. Uh, I could go into really a lot more detail than this, but it's basically just bacteria growing on a surface in a um, film made up of uh, polysaccharides. And basically the bacteria degrade organic compounds, so fats, sugar, stuff like that, into bicarbonate, uh, electrons, free uh, energy electrons, and hydrogen ions. These hydrogen ions then diffuse across from the anode to the cathode, where they where they are, where they recombine with the electrons that are liberated from the microbial metabolism and form hydrogen. Uh, that's the this process is a lot more energy efficient. As the as the energy, it's only required to reduce the protons. You don't so, have to split up the, the the water molecules because the wait, hydrogen is formed from the organic compounds. Wait, so do they do this in nature then? Like, what's the purpose of it? Um, the purpose of for 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 these guys, they produce well. In in nature. You have these bacteria known as um, electroactive bacteria, or electrochemically active bacteria. These basically are these basically will form on uh, mineral uh, mineral precipitates such as magnesium and iron, or or even actually around on paper gold deposits, and they basically grow in. And they basically they they grow in the absence of oxygen, or they can grow in the absence of oxygen, or yeah, they can grow in the absence of oxygen. They're known as anaerobic. So during the course of their metabolism, they form elect. Basically, the whole process of metabolism is to. I know I'm really getting it. It's simplifying it here, and the people who are going to who are more knowledgeable than this are going to kill me, but. Uh, they break down the substrate to free high energy electrons. These electrons then are used to drive the um, the, the cell, but they are then used to form ATP. And then once the electrons once the electrons donate their energy, they um, they have to be you know they have to be got rid of because otherwise they they block the whole process. So in order to do that, they reduce these minerals that they bind to these positively charged minerals. And basically, that's the, what they're doing in nature. But we take that process, this electron donating ability of this microorganism, and uh, basically put it onto a charged anode. Uh, yeah. I hope that makes sense because I was kind of more kind of going through my own head there more than anything else. But yeah, it's just this electroactivity. It's just a way for them to basically respire like we respire we use oxygen as an electron acceptor at the end of our uh, process these bacteria use minerals such as gold uh, palladium they can actually use uh, that surprised me they can actually use uranium and plutonium as electron acceptors which are you know usually very quite quite quite, quite nasty metals and so we just take that ability and use it here. Uh, so has it been shown to work though? Or is this all like lab, like very small scale R and D at the moment? At the at the moment, um, at the moment, there 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 have been pilot plants done. Uh, in the lab bench, they've been trying different types of reactor configurations and electro materials. But on the pilot plant, the amount of hydrogen formed isn't, it's, it's not commercially viable yet. Mm -hmm. and, and how long before, like, like what is this costing, uh, say, a litre at the moment compared to whatever, uh, a pound 
ten or a pound twenty for a liter of diesel at the moment. Like, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it working out at the moment for this? Well, and at like the moment, I, at the moment, I haven't seen any cost analysis done from for this uh, technology. Uh, but dude, Buck, you are jumping the gun there a bit, aren't you? That's <laughs> 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 fair enough. <laughs> When are these things going to be in my home? No, but again, but it's, <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's, it's but it's it's interesting to know like how far like you know if if it's at the moment it's costing a hundred pound a liter. Yeah, you, that, you know that, it, it could give you a rough idea. Of, of, is this realistically going to be something we're going to see in fifty years? Is it going to be something we're going to see before two thousand fifty? I always worry about that kind of level, uh, not level of uh, that kind of reasoning because it always reminds me of Top Gear. Uh, like, <laughs> I really hate Top Gear. Yeah. I, what do you guys think? You, you, I you haven't read. watched. You, you I, can read, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harsh. Yeah. So Harsh uh, what, Yeah. What they do that really knocks me off is they always have like really, really like alpha or beta technology, and they put it on the show and they slag it off. And I, and, it, and it was like, oh, when when you know when's it going to be doing this? When's it going to be doing that? Oh, I was not doing it already. Fuck it. So I I just always reminds me of that I'm not having to go. Just Thanks I fucking hate Top Gear. Go. <laughs> internet sorry. internet tough man that's what you are internet tough man um <laughs> ow <laughs> so this, this, this is very very early on in the in this you know in in the process um do you, yeah, but uh from what i can tell it's it's this this particular technology is actually going to be used more so to as a kind of um it's going to be used to not only produce hydrogen, but to treat wastes, uh, food uh-huh. wastes, to lower the uh, amount of organics in the um, in the in the in the liquid waste. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's not uh, just of... just just it's not just focused on producing energy. Although that is uh, certainly something they want to increase, because at the moment. They used they you know most studies use a mixed microbial community, so there'd be a lot of different microbes there, and since there's a lot of different microbes there, you have a lot of competing pathways that actually can actually use hydrogen. So you have uh, these anode respiring bacteria can actually use hydrogen as an electron source, such as such as we use glucose. If uh, if I was to bring a you know kind of put an analogy on it. And there's also. I was gonna say, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. You, know, you you just said about organic uh, stuff. Uh, I'm t- I take it you're talking about like DOC, dissolved organic carbon. Yes. Uh, H- how would producing hydrogen get like solve that problem? Because the something? because at this because the bacteria break down the organics to produce um, hydrogen ions. They produce I think it's CO two or bicarbonate. And oh right, oh, so it. so they Sorry. yeah, it's uh, and these electrons that then they transfer to the electrode, which then when you uh, use a when you poise the electrode, you know, at a particular potential, it will reduce the hydrogen ions at the cathode, and usually you would include a membrane, a membrane in the middle, so just to ensure that the height, just to um, uh, Trying to remember now, you include a anode, a, an anode, a, a cation or anion exchange membrane, and that just ensures that the hydrogen ions, when they tra- you know, they they um, the they don't react with anything else in the in the medium. Is this stuff though? Is it going to be any better than bugs that can produce long chained hydrocarbons for fuel? Um. Because that, that's another one that I know people are going towards. Like, oh, we can get, you know, this bug will make such and such oh, yeah. that you can Bio diesel, put uh, in your car. Uh, biodiesel, yeah. Um, at the moment, I, I don't... I, at the moment, I, I don't know. That's that's the, basically about the most high size answer I could get, give. I, not, I don't know if they're going to be better, but I definitely think that it's going to... It, it, it's not going to be one solution. It's going to be a mixture of these different technologies. Mm. Uh, yeah. Whatever you can get the energy, it's probably the most. Um, like this would definitely be good for de- degradation of waste. Um, I've seen, and I've seen mixed studies on CO two COD removal, um, but I think that's more to do with the community used. 
I think it's interesting that uh, a lot of these waste companies are looking at kind of biology as a way to get rid of nasty stuff that they want. I mean, I worked on a project a while ago um, where they were using bugs to get rid of uh, long hydrocarbons. Essentially, these bugs were just churning it up. And every few days, you had to put in a few litres of this stuff, give it a bit of a churn, and they were just watching the uh, dissolved organic carbon just go down and down and down. Uh, so I, I think it's really cool and interesting. So anyway, anyway I'm going off t- topic. Sorry about this. Um, Buck, you've been really quiet. So uh, wh- what do you have to say? Because uh, it's, it's all been fairly technical for, for me here now. Uh, I, I started researching about biofuels about 36 hours ago, so I'm not totally up to speed as yet. Um, but f- f- from the bits and pieces I did understand, it, it seems similar to um, uh, this idea of using algae as a biofuel uh, in the sense in the sense that it's also going to be used to um, you know suck up carbon obviously also clean uh, used to clean and as waste management clean water so there's a, a project at the moment uh, off the coast of san well the idea is off the coast of san francisco and it's going to be used because uh, san francisco's putting its waste straight into the ocean so this uh, would be a way of treating as well but um, they were saying there was still a time off from this being a viable source as well. Is it anything like that? Uh, yeah, I think I think I know what you're talking about there. Um, algae. I think I know for for I know for usually algae they 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 use. Um, for sorry, just trying to think. I know for hydrogen. Uh, algae is uh, used as in direct biophotolysis. So this is where they, um, and without going into the exact mecha, me- uh, exact mechanics, they use the energy of the sun to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the problem with this, well, just in terms of hydrogen, so just hydrogen first, because that's actually more about um, I I would know more about. Is that the you need a large bioreactor surface area, so that increases the cost of the process, um, because you just need to have the entire reactor illuminated. So you kind of need a large pond, a large scale, large shallow pond, or something. The, the two, similar. the two potentials I seen. One was internal, and one would it would have had required. An, uh, an outside power source to light up everything and the second was what you're describing there was just large ponds and one yeah. of the suggested one is in the water beside San Francisco and they would be the algae would be grown inside large plastic pockets and it, so it wouldn't be released to the wild then? no it wouldn't no. Be, but they would be fresh they would be fresh water algae um, they would be kept inside these large uh, the large plastic bags essentially uh, filled up with uh, wastewater and the algae would feed on the wastewater and if anything was to get damaged they were to leak out the algae would die because of the fresh water and uh, the waste could be cleaned up from there so it it it's it's it seemed like the it's of all the potential biofuels it seems my favorite so far but uh you know i yeah. don't you think it's funny that like something like that can get the green light and something like i said about my dirty uh, mud getting treated by bacteria that they found I think it was in the Gulf of Mexico and that's totally fine no one bats an eyelid <laughs> the soon as you give an organism a gene from somewhere else people fucking lose their mind <laughs> yeah. if they knew the litres and litres of stuff that I poured just in the open uh, well it wasn't the open it was kind of contained but relatively not not really it was just in a like a dumper truck thing Oh, oh, you know, I, I think people just lose their minds. Um, I, I always thought that was really interesting. So I think like algae, especially, uh, which is known for, you know, when people think of algae, they'll, they'll think of like blooms and stuff like that. So I'm surprised that that one's... It's, it, 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 it's, I, it, ha, it, it hasn't as yet got total green light. They're still working on it at the moment. But, you know, uh, apparently because of lots of, there's lots and lots of red tape, but that's the, that's the principle. So it hasn't got totally red lit yet, um, mm. but it, it it seemed because I was looking at um, was like even there just that um, the other one of the potential was corn to ethanol, um, where they were saying like I thought that would have been a, a fairly reason. Have you do you know much about that or? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, 
it's like all of them. Um, well, it depends if you use it. Depends if you're exclusively using it for waste management and stuff like that. I can totally see that. But it, if and and it, that's like its primary use, and you're just getting the secondary something off it feel. Mm -hmm. But um, ethanol from uh, plants and stuff, it's its primary use, and. <laughs> It, the economics of it sometimes are a bit iffy, as well as mm -hmm. how much CO2 it's actually saving from going into the environment. From, from one, one of the areas I found, it said um, so you need to double the CO2. If you get take from any CO2 captured from using corn to ethanol, it actually doubles the CO2 released into the atmosphere. So corn is not the... Wait, how does it do that? Uh, from the the half, you have to pick it. You have to pro. There's a huge amount of ah, energy, right, to yeah. processing it and things like that there. So corn isn't. But I sent even there the IMF done a, a report on on biofuels 2008. One point five percent of global fuel use was biofuel. Like, what, what what do you see as when do we see like the first airplanes? Been, you know, being used on biofuel because you know we are like it's depending on where you're looking. Nearly every country, if not every country, has reached peak oil. I well, uh, as, as I would say, when we get the costs down or the, the efficiency mm -hmm. of producing the the fuel high, because if you look where ethanol is already bioethanol, perfect example Brazil, yeah. they they use uh, bioethanol, mm -hmm. but the price. As far as I know, it's either it, there's, there's either not much difference or it's more expensive to use the bioethanol. Uh, from than what I understand with, with Brazil, they use fifty percent of the country's use on ethanol. They have a huge source of you know huge amount of land, so lots of sugar cane, which is what their ethanol is run on. But I think again, it, it's it's not sort of the success story they're letting on because it's largely yeah. sub a government subsidised. And it's not, you know, it's but it, it it's taking over at the moment. And when fuel, when oil does sort of, you know, take off again in price, take off. I said it probably will be worth it. But apparently, they have the most efficient uh, ethanol producing uh, plants in the world, just from location and things like that. There, it all, everything seems to have been done right in Brazil. From what well, I understand. It, yeah. It, to me, it depends on what angle you're coming from. Uh, you know me. I love alpha beta technology. I'm a real sucker for that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, if you're marketing this stuff as it's going to help protect the environment, yada, 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 but it ends up, like, being the same, if not worse, yeah. or even just even slightly better, then you can't really sell it as that. Yeah. If you want it as another way of getting fuel that's economical, that's totally fine, as long as, you know, your sums add up. And at the moment, it, it is a bit squiffy, but it's the same with all these kind of newish, relatively new technologies. I mean, hopefully, in the next few decades, one of them is just going to take off. We'll either find a great solar panels or a great way of having wind or tidal energy or new ways of extracting uh, such and such from the environment. I don't know. Uh, but Well, well obviously, obviously uh, the day will be saved by uh, solar fucking <laughs> They are. I love... <laughs> I wanted it to be true. You just uh, <laughs> what a come. I it really they really sold it to me. Like I mean, I watched that video and I feel like a total dick for it selling to me. Really, but when their sales pitch included the the idea that the world will someday look like Tron was one of the big sell sales. Uh, that's what got me. Uh, pitches on. <laughs> uh, I know. I that's what got me. It was like I look so. It crazy. was uh, like. What? And then and then Thunderfoot with his science. Yeah. No, oh, it was not. Sounds. It was when. It, it, it was <laughs> ruining everything. It wasn't that bit. I, I kind of like, I was just like, oh my god, I want Tron, I want it so bad, so I ignored a bit of it. But then it was starting talking about heating them. And I was like, well, no. <laughs> and then I thought, well, <laughs> glass, no, you know, no. But uh, there's loads of other things. I mean, we talk about this one a lot. Um, people making roofing tiles uh, out of like solar cells. Mm -hmm. That could be something in the future. Uh, or like just in general, yeah, totally. put it into buildings in general i mean i still these solar cells are not perfect at the moment they they take a lot of interesting elements to make and they need to be shipped from various places and they they take years and years to get their money back economically and all this stuff but you know i love my beta technology yeah. i love it so I, I definitely do see a place for solar uh, power um in, in energy especially where i want to see i want to think that Ireland or the UK would probably be the best place for uh, <laughs> no. for solar. I think that may be more 
uh, wind power Speak or hydro, to yourself. hydro up, up in the north here <laughs> Jesus roasting sun all the time Buck I've seen you in real life you are as white as anything <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tanned I'm so sweaty <laughs> um, no it's yeah, we're not going to get many solar panels up about this part of the country. No, going, going back to yeah. biofuels, I think we're going a bit off topic again. Um, <laughs> you know, it doesn't just have to be plants that make these things. Well, no, I, I mean like big plants, like with leaves and shit. Um, you know, surely we can engineer a bug to produce this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I, I'm, I know that is uh, one of the promises of synthetic biology is to come up with a bacteria that can produce biofuel better uh synthetic biology yes. i've heard that's the devil's work <laughs> uh, if you were to believe some organizations that are green Shukerman. him as well yeah but it's i know there's uh work going on in imperial college actually looking at uh, producing uh, engineering geobacillus to produce um, I can't remember which biofuel because it, it, it didn't actually say which biofuel but they're actually looking at produce uh, engineering a geobacillus organism to produce biofuels um, and at the moment uh, th- as far as I know the the main lim- the, the limiting factor in the yield that you can get from a bacteria is more of the the f- there's something like ethanol. Ethanol is also antimicrobial. Yeah, so you nearly need to come overcome that uh, res- that resistance. Uh, actually, I know in Singapore, one of my friends is actually um, looking at uh, insert using um, compounds to stabilize the membrane because biodiesel using lipids can actually destabilize the bacterial membrane. So if you insert these compounds, uh, let me, I know DSSN, I can't remember the actual name of it. And I even seeing it, I was like, I can't pronounce that for the life of me. <laughs> so it's probably even better that I don't remember. Uh, these mo- molecules basically stabilize the membrane and basically protect the bacteria and allows greater generation of the biobutanol. Um, and I know actually Nottingham does work with uh, biofuels as well. They look at bioethanol and biobutanol. Actually, they prefer biobutanol because of the greater energy content if um, of, compared to ethanol because of the more, carb- more carbon-hydrogen bonds. Am I correct in saying there? Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you not know your, sta- your basic organic chemistry there? Terrible. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm more... I lo- sorry I love this like chemistry never gets mentioned on this podcast or even on my own channel so the, the moment it does I just jump on it I love this stuff I, uh, I... I'm so sad chemistry no then no no, no I totally agree with that yeah fuck <laughs> carry on man I'm just going to cry, cry about something unrelated <laughs> but, uh... anyway sorry what were you saying uh um, actually, another t- actually topic I want to bring up is actually microbial fuel cells. Now, this it's think of remember the microbial electrolysis cell I brought uh, from the start to set up there. Mm-hmm. We have an anode, the cathode, anion exchange membrane, and this one, it it microbial fuel cell is is obviously it's, it's different. Instead of you injecting energy in to to produce hydrogen, or you can actually use microbial electrolysis cells. This kind of technology produces other things like ethanol, methane, hydrogen peroxide. You can actually get a uh, get a an electrochemically active anode, electro electro ele- sorry electrochemically active biofilm grown on the anode of the microbial fuel cell, and basically they will break down the uh, organic contaminants in your uh, wastewater. And at the same time, they will transfer those electrons to the cathode chamber, which is this in this particular technology, the cathode chamber is aerobic, so it's open to oxygen. And the oxygen com- comes along, combines with the electrons at the cathode and forms water. This produces an electrical current in this process. And you can use that then to 
do uh, do work um light up a light bulb say or <laughs> or whatever you want to connect that battery to expect but here's the thing though like th- that's really sounds interesting but is it really practical ever in the future when we already have technology at the moment that far surpasses it it's I mean, it's good having it like as a way of getting rid of waste. Oh yeah, it's 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 not, it's at the moment, and I completely agree. It's not going to rev. It's not going to. It's not one of these fancy pants, revolutionary uh, ideas. But at the moment, actually, sorry, I have it in my notes that it is being marketed by a company called MC. Uh, I can't pronounce it. MC. It's actually here. But it's just gone past me in my notes. Um, they actually uh produce these microbial fuel cells to basically break down the organic contaminants and then that current is then used to help with the wastewater treatment process because a lot of the cost associated with water treatment is um, just energy heating up the system because this takes place at around 50 degrees usually for biological treatment of waste um so this is a way you can get back some of that energy that you put in because it's quite expensive it, it is is water treatment when you talk about this is is this just a added benefit or is this required to help bring down the cost to make this a, a, a real alternative um the sorry sorry uh, don't, not sure what you mean do you mean that it's um that it's just to bring yeah. down the cost of the wastewater treatment, or oh, or is is just to bring down the, of the of the end product biofuel. Uh, the in this particular case, it's just to bring down the cost of treating the wastewater. It's the bio the fuel the fuel so it's itself an extra is just benefit. um the current it, that's produced. It's it's the, a biofuel per se, like hydrogen is produced. It's just that this process produces mm. energy, electrical energy. That could then be used to, as to heat up the reactor. This has actually been commercial. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to bring that but up because actually, I don't know, I kind of sad like that. I, I kind of find that interesting mm. where this is a technology that's gone from, th- this is a cute idea, but let's we actually bring it in now into the real world. But, um, but uh, you, there's a, uh, I, I'm, if microbial fuel cells I don't think are probably going to you know be the, the you know uh, what's it, it's not going to be the main thing but there actually are some good things coming out of microbial fuel cell research actually the, does any of you actually seen the uh, PhD comics the, your, their YouTube channel uh, no uh, no def- I definitely recommend watching some of their videos because they come up with these short v videos that are quite cool on different scientific topics um one of them they actually went to a research lab in saudi arabia where they were using microbial fuel cells to produce power that is then used to remove salt from seawater to produce drinkable water Mm. so that's kind of so they're using wastewater power to clean up water for you know clean up sea water you know make it drinkable so that's actually another aspect of this technology so although it's a kind of good sample a good example of showing that yeah this isn't going to generate a lot of power but you can incorporate this into the designs of other technologies and Mm -hmm. you know it you know it's not going to be the solution in and of itself if that makes sense yeah i think one of the best things biofuel has going for it is essentially the infrastructure is already there Mm -hmm. for it uh, mm-hmm. which is something we haven't really talked about. So, like like a major problem with having electric cars uh, at the moment is that we, 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 we're we just not capable of having them on the roads. We, well, you know, we, we don't have stations that you can charge up at, like, everywhere. I mean, there's the odd one, mm-hmm. but it's not the same as having a car like mine where I can just go to a petrol station. Oh, yeah. Whereas with biofuels, you know, it, it's just mm-hmm. a quick fix to get it to pump out whatever you want. But even... Um... There's uh, airplanes. Like we're, we're not going to be seeing a battery airplane anytime no. soon. 
you know, you know, it's something which is so totally essential yeah. to our way of. Yeah, that's that's, that's 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 very important. Uh, if, if you're ever going to bring in a new energy, you know, a new this a new fuel, you really do need to have at least the infrastructure there, or at least be able to introduce the infrastructure easily. Because that's kind mm. of uh, that's going to be a big roadblock. There's no point in having a, this fancy pants new technology if no one's not going to be able to use it, or it's just going to be too expensive. Uh, mm. For example, like hydrogen, it's a great uh, fuel, but at the moment, it's it's really not safe for um, to use because it's 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 an invisible gas. It, and there's no odorants to add in so you know you know like natural gas there are additives additives added in to give it a smell there's nothing really to do that for hydrogen but for hydrogen i do know that um it's actually going to be used to mix in with natural gas so it's good. so it's so it lowers the carbon footprint of natural gas uh -huh. um hmm. but how can they do that where are they going to get the hydrogen from um but there's usually at the moment uh the it's a uh, uh steam reforming of uh, of uh, coal or other fossil fuels that's the main source of hydrogen produced at the moment you can ha produce hydrogen using uh uh photolysis which basically just a catalyst like titanium dioxide and that can produce hydrogen from water use, using light as an energy source. But the problem is there that it's unreliable. As far as I know, uh, probably somebody mm. be able to correct me in the comments because I'm not into the photolysis. But as far as I know, through my reading for this, for uh, I'm actually doing a, a, a literature review on um, a microbial electrolysis cells. So this is kind of why I picked this topic. But... Um, the electrolysis, sorry, the electrolysis is this this catalyst is prone to poisoning from hydrogen peroxide, so it stops working. And hydrogen peroxide is actually produced as a byproduct. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's not exactly so it's you know self poisoning. Yeah. And then you have the biological production <clears throat> methods that um, are good. There's some there's some promising ones here. But they've come with their own challenges, as I said before. Um, for example, you can use dark fermentation, which does basically the back the uh, mixed microbial community break down uh, organics and produce hydrogen. But there are, um, you know, the hydrogen actually. Isn't in time going to be a, a major problem there, though? Yeah, um, I'm not too actually I'm not too sure on the, on the actual rate. The kinetic rate mm. but for dark fermentation of oh, actually for dark fermentation i've seen it's, it's around youtube but i've seen it literally around 30 degrees but the main problem actually for dark fermentation is is that um there there are organisms in there called metanogens now these basically take these basically uh, there's some caveats here but basically they take the hydrogen and carbon dioxide and combine it to form methane now methane, yeah, it's good. It's a it's a good biofuel, but it's not as good as hydrogen. Its energy content is not as good as hydrogen. Further, the hydrogen, the hydrogen itself, when it gets starts to when it's the level starts to rise, it actually inhibits can actually start to inhibit hydrogen production and can actually cause um, the hydrogen reoxidation. So basically, the hydrogen is. Right basically uh, broken down again mm -hmm. and then there's the as i said before there's um the the light dependent uh, processes but they d are dependent on um the large a large bioreactor you know you need a expensive large bioreactor and mm -hmm. also at, at, oxygen is a combination it's ox sorry, oxygen is a byproduct of this process and so oh, you know you're producing hydrogen and oxygen at the same time and th you know that's gonna that's a yeah, safety concern uh, and as, as also it's not it doesn't have a highest synthesis rate as uh as the dark fermentation and mm. then then you have bio sorry the microbial electrolysis which then again has its own problems but you know these are problems that uh are 
you know, for us to, to, to <laughs> as scientists to, to tackle. So, uh, one thing that I think we've missed that I, I think has real potential from biofuels is not to make a new type of fuel that's out there. Like, uh, well, I guess ethanol would technically be like a new type of fuel. It's one that we're not really used to. And, mm-hmm. You know, the real world isn't really run on. But uh, I think Buck slightly, you slightly tweaked it before when you said, you know, when are we going to see airplanes run on electricity and what have you? Well, what about the other way around? Uh, like having airplanes running on what they're running on now, but having it made from organisms, uh, having yeah. like Jet 1A fuel made from them. That sounds... Fantastic. I mean, normally, I you know, I hate uh, energy conversion usually. So when people say like, oh, hydrogen powered cars, and you're like, oh, where are you going to get the hydrogen from? Oh, it's electrolysis, yada yada. Oh, where's that energy from? Well, it's from coal. Yeah. You're like, well, that's just energy transfer, and you're losing along the way. It's it's not clean. Mm-hmm. But like, I can totally see, especially from a financial point of view, you know, needing this kind of fuel. So do you think there'll be things like that made in the future, where we have like organisms making jet fuel and fuel de- like proper stuff that's in use now at the moment it, I, I'm not sure it, I don't see any reason why they, we, why we not why we couldn't have these organisms to be producing these fuels possibly through either synthetic biology or some other technology that may come along it's it's kind of you know you're you're kind of predicting the future there, which is something I'm not anywhere near qualified to do, but you know I I don't see why not. Um, but we you uh, there's there's still a lot of challenges there that are uh, inhibit uh, that are limiting these uh, these technologies. But uh, like what? Um, there's the. Is a major issue is going to be oil. Coal. It's coal is we have a lot, yeah. a lot of coal left, and it's going to be much easier to just turn that into some sort of fuel rather than you know all, all the science, which is 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 you know we're we're only twenty years away from it. You know always. You know mm. it, it's it's you know there's, there's a lot of big ideas, but then just this coal is just so easy to get at, and it's going to be yeah. So would would you count that as much much of a problem for you and, and for the sciences you know for these sciences? I say it, that's a an immediate pro. It, that's a mean that's an immediate thing is that we have we 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 have relatively abundant sources of fossil fuels. Um. Uh. So that so when you're introducing a new technology, you always have to consider well why is somebody going to bother investing in this? Mm-hmm. Because you know a lot of companies are invested only for the short term profit relatively uh i'm more mm-hmm. academic so i really wouldn't know too much about the uh the in- industrial side of things but if you look at the biofuels th- th- it's not it's not an efficient process at the moment because of the toxicity of the bio of the biofuel to the organism this um you now the the size of the reactors that are needed um Sometimes the high temperature of the process. I think dark fermentation actually. I have a sorry. I have down here in my notes. Dark fermentation actually requires around fifty five degrees, um, to work uh, efficiently. Um, you know you have you could have explosive mixtures such as in uh, the ferment the light dependent for photo direct photo uh, direct biophotolysis that produces a oxygen hydrogen mixture. Um, trying to think what else um for second generation biofuels you it's very hard to break down the plant's structural materials and for even first generation i've actually read that you know you're for first generation uh, should you be using fuel you know you're using food that could be used to feed people it, it yeah. That seems to be a massive, massive issue because um, when America made this massive push on um, changing corn to ethanol, as, as I mentioned, the price of corn in Mexico went up um, 400%. So this is a poor country which yeah. had this very cheap um, mm-hmm. cheap crop and then the, the just because something America's decided to do and then you know people were suddenly going hungry. 
Um, like, w w what do you see is how, how, how going forward do we avoid that? I'd that's I'd say to avoid that we should more look at the second generation biofuels, um, uh -huh. such as the ones that are used. Sorry, the tougher one. The yeah, plant yeah, waste. The, yeah, which the plants yes. the, the stuff the plants that we are just throwing away that and at the mm. same time it's very hard to degrade that so i know the, probably the best yes. way to do that is look at the the boogeyman the synthetic biology strategies to engineer these pathways to break down these hard to digest materials to produce the, the fuels needed and at, at my by no means am i said would i say also that biofuels is um going to be the you know the energy strategy that's going to save the world yeah, it's it's it, or anything like yeah. that it's, it's one, one small part, part in a in a in a smart in a smart strategy to produce both to produce energy it's just wherever you can get the energy that's where you should uh -huh. um wherever you can get the energy efficiently so that will uh, definitely would uh, uh, definitely biofuels because uh you know that's you can use that to degrade you know you can get that from the degradation of waste uh definitely solar uh wind and even i would probably say nuclear as well i would definitely include nuclear i i my, from my think from the very very limited understanding i have any but i'd have to imagine like a, a nuclear is going to be the the main one it is the most reliable it seems to be the technology that's moving fast uh um you know but we are going to need the the liquid you know the liquid fuels are going to be yeah. required for our way of life as well so i'd imagine that's going to oh be yeah good. yeah uh, um, but i'm just saying we should definitely consider all the alternatives uh yeah everything um, yeah if that makes sense sorry just <laughs> no oh, no um, no it's it's it i i've watched i've, I've read but i'd say 12 articles on it i i've watched several youtube videos and stuff like that there and everyone everyone's saying this is not the goal, the silver bullet. Yeah. This is just going to be one part yeah. of a bigger. I there's there's no uh, there's not that and there's no such thing as a silver bullet really for anything, uh, for anything for any real issue in science. Well, oil was pretty fucking good when it was. Oh, it was, was but <laughs> unfortunately, that's other other than the global warming and the oil <laughs> only for the and, you know and the wars in the and the wars in the Middle East. If it wasn't for those things, it'd be great. Yeah, if it wasn't for you know all that all that environmental and political geopolitical <laughs> geopolitical stuff, you know, oil oil's fantastic. <laughs> oh God, anyway, I, I, um, I can see that being quote mined by. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so we so I said so we'll just stick with oil, forget the rest. <laughs> so so uh, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted yeah. there. That's all right. So anyway, on that note, I think we should call this one to an end, chaps. What do you think? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, Unless you've got anything else to say. Um, if solar fucking roadways all the way. <laughs> yeah. Bring it back, Bailey. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, cool. Well, anyway, um, hopefully you guys out there in internet land enjoyed this uh, podcast. And if you did, remember to give us a like and give us a rating on iTunes. I know I've been saying this quite a lot recently at the end of the podcast, but it really does help us out. And, you know, it helps us keep keeps us going as well because it's nice to read them and to know what you guys think. And, yeah, let us know what you think in the description as well because I promise you we read them all. So, anyway, yeah, it's the end of this episode. Uh, so, Kitch, before you leave one more time, uh, where can people find you? Well, I'm mainly on the Throne with Logic podcast. So, you can just go into thronewithlogic.com. It will give you a li links to the most recent podcasts and past podcasts. Also, I have a blog on Throne with Logic. That's the main way to get into my content. Um, it's on the. It's called the Bio Inspiration blog. So if you just look under Throne with Logic blogs, you find Bio Inspiration. That's me there. And also, you can follow me on Twitter on Bio Inspiration or Michael Kitching. I can't remember which best way to which <laughs> way. Bio Inspiration is my Twitter handle. Um, cool. Uh Right, oh then, uh, so yeah, uh, follow those guys if you want to, and Buck, no one wants to know where to find you, so I'm not going to tell them. No, just just, just say my name uh, three times. And I'll <laughs> uh, or, get me on or get me on Twitter. One of those I, do, I don't actually slag you off too much in case the book of maniacs come after me. <laughs> the millions and millions. 
<laughs> you can get your own cult now. It's, it's getting a bit crazy. <laughs> Some of the comments are a little bit creepy, yeah, but I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> cool. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, uh, people of the internet. So it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. It's goodbye from the lovely Buck. Good luck, gentlemen. And it's goodbye from the lovely Kitch. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.